Julie, before we get into details about the actual interview with Gina Lola Brigida, how did it come about that you were even able to get an interview with this person? First of all, I want to tell you that I hate being interviewed, John. And I guess I'll try and answer your question as honestly as I can. The truth of the matter is, there was somebody in the city who was trying to get a television program going. Uh, and they were looking for somebody to do interviews, and this person knew who I was and liked my work, so he called me at the radio station and told me that Gina Lola Brigida would be coming into town. That's how I found out about it. I wasn't contacted through regular channels like her press agent as the other television stations were, and she wasn't on any radio. So that was the motivation for doing this interview, although I was curious about her and I wanted to meet her. Now, obviously, this is not a television show. <laughs> it never quite worked out, but it was fun to do. And we got an independent cameraman who hoped that we would, in fact, end up doing a show and he would be able to work on it. So he took time off from his regular job, and there we were, sort of um, an anonymous group of people trying to get an interview with Lola Brigida without any call letters. So persistence pays off. Well, that's true, because I didn't lie about it. When I did get in contact uh, with the people who were bringing her in, I told them the truth. I said I worked at a radio station, but that we hoped we were going to be able to put a TV program together at some point, which, which would be interviewing people. And... Um, I asked them if it would be okay if we brought a cameraman and recorded it both on video and for radio. And I was nervous about that because, you know, not having the credibility of call letters like BCTV or, or VU or CBC, what have you, behind you, I figured they'd say no, but I tried. And they said, we'll call you back, and which they did, and it was okay. So there you go, guys. Don't give up. Never give up. What happened behind all that? Okay, what happened was really very simple. You have somebody who has international celebrity status coming into Vancouver with a tight schedule because it, it wasn't just television that wanted to interview Ms. Lola Brigida. The papers did, and she was also at that point trying to sell a book. So she was very busy, and she wasn't going to be in Vancouver for very long. Now, one of our local stations really goofed. They phoned and said, we very much would like to do an interview with Miss Lola Brigida, and we want to do it on location at Stanley Park because we think that it would be so much more effective to have sound and, and to see greenery rather than just coming up to her hotel room. Well, she was enraged, and her attitude was, who do they think they are? You know, I have other people to see. I can take time out. I'm tired. I come in from, from Italy on a jet. I'm not going walking around a park somewhere. So, you know, you've got to consider what the circumstances are as well. Anyway, uh, she refused them, which was really nice for me because that station ended up using two of my clips because they didn't get an interview with her. So that worked out well. Now, an, another local station made a big mistake with her as well. She is, whether it's apparent to you or not, because you're probably also young, a legend. And another legend was coming into Vancouver right around the same time. That was Sophia Loren. They were almost crossing paths. And the interviewer, and, oh, I, what I should have mentioned, I'm sorry, folks, is that Gina Lola Brigida and Sophia Loren are rivals, which, which you know, you can read up about at the Vancouver Public Library. <laughs> and what happened was the interviewer started the interview by asking Ms. Lola Brigida if she knew Sophia Loren and what she thought about her. And she said, I am not here to talk about Sophia Loren. You want to do interview with me, you talk to me, which is true. You don't, whoever your interview, interviewee may be, you shouldn't be asking them about other people. Do you agree with me? I mean, even if you're looking at, uh, you know, a rock and roll group, why would you want to start talking about another rock and roll group? 
So uh, she took offense to that. So cut that interviewer off after three minutes. She said, no more. So I walked out of there feeling pretty good because she spent uh, a fair amount of time with me, although this is the only tape you'll see that was edited. We were together for almost 20 minutes, and her PR people got really nervous because the Vancouver Sun was waiting outside and, and, and the province and so on. It showed me that if you are a considerate person and if you listen to what the person is saying and you do your homework, which I did, she saw immediately that I knew an awful lot about her the woman is not lacking in ego, was flattered that I took the time to do my homework and opened up. And we actually became friends towards the end. She had taken her up on it. She said, if you're ever in Italy, give me a call, you know. And I don't know. Anything else? Well, I think it's really nice that uh, both of you, after the interview, went for a walk around Stanley Park. <laughs> <laughs> sure, John. Sure. Now, Julie, the next celebrity interviewee is Bob Hope. Again, similar to the question on Gina Lola Brigida, how did you manage to get a camera and get in there and record an interview with a living legend like that? Here we go again, persistence. This was a little different in that the interview had already been arranged through Los Angeles because 97 KISS FM was linked up to a program that ran on Sundays that wanted clips of Bob Hope and Don Amici for their program, and they knew that the two of them were coming to town. So it was perfectly legitimate for me to go out and do these interviews because this guy wanted some excerpts. What came into question was the fact that I was trying to get in there again with a camera with the hope that we might be able to have a television program eventually. And I did the same thing. I told the truth. I said, you know, I'll wait until the other television stations are through with Mr. Hope and I would be very grateful and, and on and on. And surprisingly enough, they said, okay, so if you don't ask, you don't know, right? I mean, you'd sort of assume in a situation like that that it's hopeless, but never, ever assume anything. Go for it. It worked. What does Bob Hope like to uh, interview? I mean, he seems like a fairly relaxed person. Did he come off this way when you spoke with him? Yes, he did when I spoke with him. And I have to attribute that to the fact that I was so fortunate. He and Don Amici were here to shoot a made-for-TV film, and I had to wait an hour and a half before I even met him. And you've got to be patient in a situation like this. It was raining outside, you know, it wasn't the nicest day. But while you're waiting, try to find out everything you can about the person, aside from the homework you've done. So I started talking to his makeup man, and the makeup man tipped me off and told me that Bob Hope was hard of hearing in his left ear. And the reason why a lot of interviewers lately were giving him a bad rap about him being abrupt, being rude, was because he couldn't hear their questions. So I was able to be in, I was in the room when the other television stations were talking to him, and of course they didn't know this about him, and he was abrupt. He wasn't rude, he was actually quite humorous, but he was very abrupt because he couldn't hear some of the questions. So I ended up in a situation where I leaned in to talk to him, and he could hear what I was saying. And as a result of that, we had a marvelous time. And then he said, when they called him off the set to shoot, he said, don't go away. If you're willing to stay, I'll come back and talk to you. I spent the whole afternoon there with Bob Hope and Don Amici, and it's something that I'll certainly never forget as long as I live. So it's persistence and patience and being considerate and realizing how fortunate you are that somebody like that, instead of having a coffee break or napping because he was very tired, is spending their time granting you an interview and being cognizant of those things and never forgetting the respect a person like that deserves, both Bob Hope and Don Amici. I mean, I can't say enough about either, can't say enough about either one of them.